Welcome back to the Victory Podcast. I'm your host, Steve McGrath, and this week I'm pleased to bring you my conversation with Terrell Burgess. Now, Terrell just wrapped up his senior year at the University of Utah, and he was part of that Utes senior class that really stepped up this year, getting them all the way to number six in the country at their peak, and now he's going to play in the Senior Bowl in Mobile, Alabama. So Terrell's going to dive into his story, going from a, a multi-positional player in California, uh, the number six cornerback recruited at the time, to getting to Utah and what he's doing now to prepare for his NFL future. But before we get into Terrell's story, I need to remind you all that we're brought to you by Team Builder. And Team Builder works with high school football programs nationwide, as well as college and the NFL. So if you're looking to fine tune your weightlifting program, or you have any sort of desire to learn more about it, go to their website, use the promo code VICTORY, and you're going to get a free gift. So go there, show them some love. And now here's my conversation with Terrell Burgess. All right, on the line, I am pleased to be welcomed by a former Utah Ute. I don't know if he's ready to hear that just yet or if it sunk in, but it is none other than Terrell Burgess. Terrell, thanks so much for taking the time, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I mean, we talked a little bit before we jumped on now. Uh, How does it feel to know that you've played your last game as a Ute and and just, you know, how are you getting ready for the road ahead? It's, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's still surreal. Like I, you know, it's obviously I understand now that it's over, but it's still, I feel like the four years went by so fast that, you know, I just watched it go by and not really, you know, I took in every moment, but it was just, it was a fast four years, but something I wouldn't change for the world. Yeah. I, I, I can only imagine. Uh, now, you know, your last game was of course the, the Alamo bowl against Texas so after your bowl game, are, do you watch the NFL? Do you watch, you know, the uh, you know, college football playoffs at all? Or do you kind of just focus on what you have coming next? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love the game. So I like to watch and see what other people are doing. So, yeah, I watch the rest of the bowl games after ours and – or a couple of them. And then I also watch um, a few uh, playoff games in the NFL. So do you watch LSU or Clemson at all and think, man, you know, I would have loved to have had a crack at that? Or are you more like, you know uh, what, let me just focus on the NFL. And let me see, you know, what I'll have to be gearing up for next year. Uh, def- definitely those, those, there's those, you know, there's those things where you, where you think like, oh, that could have been us. But, you know, we didn't get what we – we didn't get done what we had to get done. So, you know, I can't fault anybody but us. But, yeah, I definitely would have loved to get a crack at one of those teams and, so what Utah's all about, but you know, it didn't work out in our favor. So, and you know what, the you guys, you had such a phenomenal year. So, I mean, just to lay the foundation here, you go from seven and six two years ago to nine and five to eleven and three. But at one point, you were eleven and one. I mean, you guys were ranked number six in the country by all accounts. A massive year, just that year over year growth that you had. You know. Let's just start with, you know, how the, the year finished because there, there's so much good. You guys were building in just so many key guys were stepping up, yourself among them. You know, what happened at, toward the end? Because you guys seemed like you were so close and, it again, very successful year. But with how things ended, uh, it had to have left just a sour taste in your mouth. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I never, you know, obviously those are two both big games. Again, one, one game, the championship game against Oregon. You know, that was a really big game. You know, we got down early and it was, we started to come back, but I guess just the end just, I guess there's a lot to come back from. And then the. And the you had game. a great game, by the way. I mean, you probably had your best game in that, uh, in that game for the Pac-12 championship. Thank you. I appreciate it. But, you know, obviously didn't do enough if we didn't win, you know, I, I'm just joking. <laughs> but um, yeah. And then the Alamo Bowl, I don't know. You know, we just, I guess we just didn't play to the best of our abilities, and it showed. Uh, I mean, like nothing about San Antonio being an hour from Austin had anything to do with that. You know, I yeah, there was a lot of uh, Texas fans, but I think we just didn't. Um, I wouldn't say that we weren't ready to play because we definitely were ready to play, but I think that we just didn't come out as well as we should have. It, well, it certainly happens to the best of them. So no, I don't think anyone's going to fault Utah for having, you know, one or two off games, uh, particularly after, again, that incredible run up to that point. You know, but I, I don't want to dwell on anything that's negative here. I want to talk about, you know, the program that, that Coach Whittingham built. And, I mean, he's been there since Urban Meyer left. And the just from your time there, you know, just, you know, particularly from the time you're a sophomore on, um, 
you just see that it, I guess a redshirt sophomore, um, the growth in, in your team. Can you just talk about how coach built that program in just the progression you saw the last few years there? Um, it's great. I mean, uh, coach, uh, coach, coach Whittingham, he's a great hard nosed man and he knows what he wants and he will make sure he gets, gets out of everybody what he wants. So I'm just, uh, ex- I'm just grateful to be able to play for him. Grateful that he gave me an opportunity. Grateful uh, for, you know, just the chance to play there. I mean, he's got a great coaching staff, great GAs, great organization there in general, the front office up there. I just, I love that place. And um, I think over the years, we definitely just uh, learned how to buy into what he was saying. And it, it worked out for us. I think, you know, obviously my first year, we played pretty well, but we obviously could have played better. And then my sophomore season, we went seven and six, and that didn't go, you know, obviously the way it's planned. And then we got in the off season, and we just bought in even more. And then last season, we played pretty well. And then this season, I guess this past season, this from last month, um, we tried to put it all together, made a run, but I guess it just didn't fall for us. So I think. The biggest thing, as long as, as long as they uh, keep going in the right direction, I think that it's o- it's only up from here for the Utah football program. Oh, well, of course, you know I just personally loved seeing you know so many guys, and again yourself included, just seniors, the upperclassmen uh, stepping up, and just so many guys had big years across the board that it was just great to see just you know that continued growth of you guys just coming in as freshmen and continuing to develop, develop and <clears throat> to see Utah do so well. And, you know, all this talk about Utah though, I, I need to get the story for how you even get there, because if I have this right, uh-huh. you know, uh, you're playing cornerback uh, coming out of San Marcos, California. Um, I, that is I, <laughs> and you're a highly <laughs> talented one too, but you're also playing a little bit of receiver. I mean, uh, um, what were you thinking playing high school football? When did college football even enter your brain? Were you even thinking about other sports? Just tell us how this whole story begins. Um, I guess I wouldn't say I was thinking about other sports, but I, I don't know. Uh, my high school, it was, it was, I played football, basketball, and I ran track. And I think it just playing playing football really showed me that this was the right sport for me kind of like the end of my sophomore season I didn't really like football I loved basketball but then I realized I wasn't going to be taller than six foot so I had to you know make a business decision and play football and it it worked out well for me I am now I know I went on to Utah I was getting recruited by a guy named John Pease I don't know if you know the name but he's a great guy really funny really funny old guy and um, every time I went on a different visit, I was always comparing it to Utah, and I felt like that was my heart trying to tell me something. And I got there and just tried to buy into the system and respect the process. And I guess now it's, you know, hopefully going to work out for me. Uh, well, you certainly seem like you're on your way. Uh, so when you commit, though, if I have this right, uh, in 2015, you redshirt. Um, it, was that something that they kind of told you up front? How did that whole decision come to be? Did it catch you off guard? Oh, I never redshirted. Oh, oh okay. Uh, sorry. Um, well, oh, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> well, uh, you know, you start your career with playing in four games, special teams. You, you get time on defense. You, you're doing a little bit of return work. You catch a, uh, at least one pass anyway at receiver. Was it ever on the table that you were going to do anything outside of play corner? Uh, yes, freshman year I played a little bit of receiver, but it, you know, it. I was only. I wouldn't say it was like because I wanted to or didn't want to. Just I just some type of person that plays where needed, and that's what I, I was needed. We had a few injuries, and I played over there. But uh, my heart was on the defense side of the ball. We had a few more injuries on the defense side of the ball, and then I came back, and I just stayed there for the rest of my career. Team player. Oh, uh, so freshman season now uh, comes and goes. You know, now as a sophomore, you're you're playing in 13 games. You're playing more games in D. You start starting on defense. From that point on, just year after year, you go from that to you know more starts on defense, more games played as a junior, and then you have you know the senior year that we'll, we'll jump into. But how did you just progress? Because you know your impact becomes bigger and greater each and every year. What were you doing specifically to allow you to just step your game up? Uh, 
I think it was just, you know, I think one of the biggest things that I did not like while I was at Utah was that, you know, there was always, like, in the offseason, there was always somebody saying, like, this is the year, this is the year. And I think going into this season, we kind of just made sure that that was not something that was said. We kind of just wanted to do what was told and not, you know, let our play do the talking. And I think it, it ended up working out for us. And I don't know, we all respected the process. We had a lot of guys that were bought into the, to what we were doing. And it was a family atmosphere, you know, because if you don't trust anybody off the field, then you're not going to trust them on the field. And I feel like as a collective group, that's what we did and it worked out. Yeah, but I mean, just the, the jump for you to go from a couple starts on defense to you start every game, you're third on the team in tackles. I mean, um, it, it's just, it, it was eye popping, you know, the, the leap that you made. Yes, sir. It was really just, you finally had your opportunity to get out there. Yeah, I think, I think that's what it is. I mean, you know, it wasn't like I was doing things like wrong before, before this season. And we just had a couple of great guys that were in front of me and they, are playing in the, the league now. So I think it was just, you know, respecting the process and being able to understand that my time would come. And then coming this year, it was just, you know, stepping up when, it need, when the time was needed and, you know, doing what I can to help the team win. Yeah. And of course, you know, you're going to play in the, the Reese's Senior Bowl. So we know that you absolutely stepped up. Otherwise, you wouldn't have got the invite. So how do they actually let you know that you're invited uh, to play in that game? Um, uh, about the senior bowl, you're saying? Yeah. Uh, I got, uh, actually it was, I actually got the invite on my birthday. I was, uh, it was my birthday nice. and coach, uh, our head coach had called a few of the guys, all of the guys that, you know, got, or got invites to, uh, bowl games and into his office, but individually, of course. And we walked in and he was like, how are you doing today? Tro? I said, I'm doing pretty well. You know, I turned 21 today. He said, Oh well, you know, I got a I guess I got a good per birthday present here for you, and he handed it to me, and I was ecstatic. You know, obviously coming into college, it's a it's a dream to go to the Senior Bowl, and obviously I knew that I didn't play, you know, that much in the last three years, but going into this season, it was definitely a goal of mine. So to see that it, um, you know, it was a, it it happened to get invited, it was it was a great feeling. So I think that was, you know, that. That was a good moment for me, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> no, of course it makes sense. Uh, I just didn't know if it was like a big team thing, but uh, the fact they did it individually and it's on your birthday, I mean, what better yes, gift on you know, turning 21 other than you know, maybe being able to go get a drink? Yes, sir. Yeah. Which was... I'm, maybe you did to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. You know, not down in the season. We don't do that. <laughs> oh, oh, of course not, of course. Um, but, you know, one thing that stuck out to me when I was looking at your resume, you know, it's great that you were able to grow and do more year after year uh, as a football player and an athlete. But, you know, you're twice a Pac-12 All-Academic. Um, what did it mean to you to be named to that as well? Uh, I think that's a big thing. It's definitely a testament to not only, you know, my family and how I was brought up, but also a testament to how well of an academic program we have at the University of Utah. You know, that wasn't just me. That was just the great tutors that we have and the great advisors that we have to put us in the right position to succeed. Yeah. And uh, for everyone that doesn't know, you are a kinesiology major. So, you know, the time that you put in, obviously studying showed with those two nominations that you did receive, but with that major, did you have any plans for, you know, when the, your football days are over, do you have any goals that you wanted to pursue in particular right now? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, I've, you know, I love physical therapy, so I thought about that. Um, I I don't think I would coach at the college level, but I was I would coach at the high school level. So maybe being a PE teacher and coaching at high school football when you know when my football career ends would be nice. Or going back to school to become a PA. I don't know. It's 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 I've got a few options, but yeah, just getting the kinesiology degree really uh, it was it was a blessing. I I, I love. I, I wouldn't say that I love school, but I, I like to learn in any way I can. And uh, kinesiology was the best uh, major that helped me do helped me do that. Yeah, and of course, just that knowledge of you know how the body works, it, it I'm sure can only help you as an athlete trying to be able to sort of self diagnose a little bit. Um, yes, sir. But and I think you have plenty of time to worry about what that next step is. I just didn't know if you had anything in mind. Uh, but. <laughs> 
That being said, um, so kinesiology aside, do you have any other, you know, interests, anything in particular that as you're able to move forward in life and, you know, hopefully start an NFL career soon that you also wanted to focus on? Oh, yes, yes. I, um, I've always been uh, really big in the special needs community. Uh, back in high school and middle school, I did this organization called Shooting Stars where we would play basketball with special needs kids. And that kind of just opened my eyes to, you know, a, a different part of, the, not, I don't want to say a different part of the world, but, you know, people, other people, you know, that where it could always be worse. And um, I came to college and I, we had different uh, uh, special needs classes come and watch practice. And there was this one main class from Miss Frost at uh, Truman Elementary that I would always talk to and got, uh, got to know very well. And that was just amazing. And then my senior se my senior year this year, uh, this, this last semester, I did this for one of my classes. I went to this uh, thing called the Work Activity Center, and it was adult special needs. And I think just going there and realizing that you know if they could, if they could get up every day and work out, and you know not have any, not complain at all about anything. I think that showed me that like it it could always be worse. And other people's problems, you know, they may be bigger than yours. So maybe not complain and just understand that the world is not just doesn't just revolve around you. And I don't know. I just I love the community and I I can't wait to do more with it. That's so awesome, man. I, I mean, the, the perspective that, that it gave you and the appreciation, it sounds like, of you know, gratitude for what you have. But I, I feel like that is something no matter where you go, uh, there's going to be an opportunity in every state and every town to, to be involved in programs like that. So that, that's awesome. I, I'm sure that uh, there's going to be a community out there very soon that's going to be very, help, very grateful that you are now <laughs> there to help make a difference. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really, I really am excited. So that being said, I, I mean, there's 32 teams out there. I, I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We have a senior bowl to play. Maybe there's a combine. There's certainly going to be a draft. Is there anything in particular that goes to your head? Maybe while you're watching some of these playoff games, like, man, I might be on this team or that team or lining up against this guy or that guy. Uh, no, not necessarily. I'm, I'm just excited for the opportunity. You know, I, I love to compete in everything that I do with everyone. You know, my, my brother and my family, we're all big competitors, whether it's Uno or just you know, racing to see who can get to the car first. So I'm just excited to compete with everybody around the nation and show people that I can play. Um, as, re as regards, uh, in regards to teams, uh, any team that decides to take a chance on me, I will promise that I'll give them my all and make sure that I play the best of my abilities, the w best way I know how, come in and learn and have a great work ethic and, you know, just learn from everybody I can. That's awesome. And I, Cannot wait to watch from the senior bowl on. I'm sure it's going to be a wild ride. Um, and Terrell, before I let you off the hook here, I have to ask <laughs> you a couple of hard-hitting questions, man. I got to make yes, you go sir. through the gauntlet. So I got a couple quick questions, and I need your knee-jerk answer. I okay. need to know, what is most important? Is it having the number one offense or the number one defense? Oh, uh, ooh, that's tough. I'm going to say the number one defense. All you right, know, from uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to say the number one defense. I'm not going to, you know, bash our defense, our offense at our college, but our offense is good. Our offense is actually great. We had some great players on our offense. Um, but I think the number one defense is more important because, you know, it can always be a shootout. Let's say you have a good off, you have the number one offense. It could always be a shootout with the other team. But, you know, you can't count on your defense to, to uh, you know, stop them in, in, the, in the end. But I feel like if you have the number one defense, you're you're bound to have a good offense because they're going against the number one defense every day in practice. So I think yes, the def number one defense is is more important than number one offense. All right, I I tend to agree, <laughs> but I like your explanation. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Now, do you have a pregame ritual that you stick to? Um, yeah, I I always make this. I always make sure to take a shower before a pregame meal, and I. I must listen to uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's a ritual or it's like it, it's it's happened where I didn't but I always listen to gospel music and Beyonce before games or at least All while right. I'm warming up. <laughs> I like it. Uh now to date and I understand that this is probably going to change but for right now at this point what would you say your favorite football memory is? Ooh. 
That is a very, very tough question. But I would probably say my freshman season against BYU, uh, one of our linebackers took a pick six back the first play of the game, and it was at home, and the crowd went crazy. And that was probably one of my favorite moments as <laughs> in my football career. Even over your own interception against USC this year? Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, one thing I'll say is we ended up winning the BYU game. We didn't. We as a team didn't win the USC game, even though I got an interception. We, we didn't win, so that, that that sucked. But yeah, no, I yeah, I'd say that interception over over anything. Awesome. Now, what is most important? Is it the players or is it the scheme? Oh, that is wow. These are some tough questions. Yeah, it's it's the gauntlet, man. Um. Oh, that's tough. There's no right or that wrong. Oh, I know there's no right or wrong, but I don't want to say the wrong one. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, ooh, uh, the players, um, because. I feel like if you don't have enough players that are bought into your scheme, things are going to go south. The Jimmys and Joes over the X's and O's. Yes, sir. Now, I got one more for you, and I think it's the most important. What is the single best piece of advice that you would give to a young athlete, you know, 16, 17 years old, that sees, you know, Terrell Burgess about to go play into the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, Super Bowl. Super Bowl maybe down the line. The Senior Bowl. Um, and wants to know how to do what you just did. What would you say to him? Ooh, that's, that's tough. But I think the biggest thing is understand that uh, it's not all about you and the team is bigger than you. And one thing that I was told that I've kept with me and I will keep with me for as long as I live is that uh, to give more in value than you can receive in payment and always exceed expectations. I love that. Very wise words right there. Thank you. Well, Terrell, thank you again for taking the time tonight. Uh, for everyone, again, the Senior Bowl is coming uh, in just about, what, 10, 11 days. It's right around the corner. I'm sure you're about to go ahead to it and, and start all the festivities. But we wish you from victory the very best of luck from there and everything onward. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be on. Be on. Oh, of course. Anytime you ever want to come back on, uh, hopefully after a very successful rookie season, we can do this again. Yes, sir. Of course. Thank you.